Are you ready to be fired up? Because I sure am. I am super excited. I've got Matt Fuller here and he actually is a broker out of San Francisco. So he's in my backyard. Um, he's a baller and I cannot wait for you to hear all about him and what he's doing. So stick around and let's get ready to be fired up. Hey, Matt, thank you for being here. I'm so excited about you. I learned something really about Matt I didn't know today. And he was like, I don't want to have a big team. I just, it's just like me and a super small team. I'm like, great. Tell me all your tips and tricks. How are you? I am doing great. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm uh, psyched to be here and uh, psyched to chat about uh, what I'm doing and what I've been up to. Yeah, so talk, tell us a little bit about, so what are you doing? What are your numbers? How many homes are you selling? I you know you're in San Fran, which, oh my gosh, like, I have to sell five houses where I am to equal the price of selling one where you are. So I'm, I'm a little jealous. <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, it's interesting. Everything's a trade-off, right? Um, I can tell you that, you know, people probably get five times as uptight when the price gets five times as expensive. Um, you know, not that people aren't just as concerned with any value of home they're purchasing. Uh, and yeah, you know, it's a, it's a really interesting town to do real estate in. I can't imagine a town with smaller homes, uh, more interesting people, and more expensive homes. So no two days are the same, and it is always interesting. I've been doing this for about 20 years. Uh, I've had my own real estate brokerage, a boutique brokerage with my business partner here in the city. We are coming up on our fourth year uh, this October. And there's been a lot of consolidation and change in the industry. As we know, Compass just went public last week. Uh, Compass pretty much ate all of the brokerages in San Francisco. And I didn't want to be eaten. Uh, I didn't want to upset anyone that I didn't want to be eaten. Uh, I didn't want to have to pick loyalties. So Biz Britton Jackson, my business partner and I, uh, we took our brand that we'd always been using and uh, opened our own boutique. And it's been great. Uh, I'm kind of a geek. I was an Apple uh, computer before I was in real estate. And, you know, there, from my point of view, there's basically two way, ways to scale in real estate. Uh, you can do more deals more efficiently. Actually, I guess there's three. You can do more deals less efficiently and pull all of your hair out, right? We've met those, met those people. Yeah. Uh, you can do more deals more efficiently uh, and keep your hair uh, other than, you know, time goes on. Or you can hire people to do the deals for you. And, you know, the traditional way to scale in real estate is to get a bunch of agents. And I don't know about you, but I've heard a lot of complaints about crappy agents in this industry and lack of quality control. Well, it's funny, you know, if it doesn't cost you anything as a broker to hire an agent, all you got to do is give them, you don't even have to give them a desk anymore, right? You give them an email address. It costs you, you know, $9.95 a month. Um, they do a couple deals, three deals, friend, family, one they got lucky with, um, you know, and you're getting the, the biggest chunk of commission out of them, you know, in terms of a split. They know the least. They're probably being supervised the least. And it's like, huh, we have this addiction to, to cheap, unsupervised, independent contract labor. And until we break the addiction to that, I don't really think as an industry, we're going to move the bar on quality. So, you know, I can't change the industry. Well, you know, I can only do my little thing, right? And, you know, my little thing is to really focus on being the very best I can for my clients, using technology to support that in the background. I mean, my, my clients don't want to talk to a robot or an AI or, you know, they want a person. Yeah. Um, you know, so the goal is to, to make me as available as possible. My business partner is available as possible. So if the other thing happens in the background, uh, and we can scale based on what we know, uh, and not having to, to go out and train and retrain and retrain. So tell me a little bit about how you're using technology. So what, are, how are you using technology to aid and a bed in um, you doing such of a great job with your clients and being able to still keep the personal touch, but keep the organization and the efficiency up. <clears throat> yeah, so my experience with real estate technology is it goes like this. Uh, a broker has a business and all of a sudden he realizes he has a business need uh, and then boom, they buy a package. And six months go by and there's a slightly different business need and boom, they buy another package. And as the, the months go by, suddenly you're at a brokerage that has 18 software packages for 18 things that all do their own thing, but don't talk to the other thing. 
Um, and that's not good because then you're replicating everything anywhere. That's where mistakes get made. So when we started, I probably made, it's either going to be a good choice or the worst choice. Uh, and uh, we chose property based based on Salesforce. And, you know, it's the 800 pound monster that can do anything. Um, but because it can do anything, you have to be really specific about what you actually want it to do. Uh, there's none of this just, hey, email my contacts, right? It's like, you know, let's make a workflow, let's automate this. And in the end, you know, it scales, it's efficient, um, you know, but it's been iteratively building on to Salesforce kind of block by block. Uh, the first piece of that I'm kind of embarrassed to admit was until we, we rolled it out, we didn't have like one CRM where I could say, these are all of my clients with all of the homes they've bought and sold that they've lived in at these locations. And these are their kids and these are their dogs. Uh, and, you know, we had those things in a sheet or here or there. Um, so that was step one, just getting it there. Then the next piece was making it talk to everything, right? So we rebuilt the website and the website's back end is Salesforce, right? So you come to the website, you're going to see the same thing that I'm seeing on the inside. You make an inquiry there, it's native to my system. Then the next piece is we rolled in transaction management. So my admins have, you know, there's Skyslope, there's blah, there's all Docs on Rooms, all of these things. They all basically do the same thing, right? Um, you know, so we rolled that in. So that I've got one place, um, you know, that I can go where I can see everything that's happening with the current closing, everything that's happened with the past closing. Then we tied in all of the marketing pieces, right? So I can do drip marketing. I can do annual marketing. I can do one-off marketing. I can do mass campaigns. Then we tie in, you know, um, uh, blah, 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 text messaging, SMS. So, you know, it's just iteratively like one, one step at a time. And because I'm my only client, my only use case, uh, I get a beta tested on me and be upset with myself when it doesn't work. So I don't have agents coming to yell at me. Yeah. And the goal at the end of the day is to have iterated this enough that not only is it a great tool for me, but if I was another brokerage in San Francisco Bay Area, I'd be like, wow, that might be a great tool worth investing in. Um, you know, do you and the next your, pieces that do you come. Sell your software? No, no, no. Mm -mm. So, uh, you know, and then the next pieces that come are you know doing CMAs out of it, right? Because we've got all of the property information there, so there's no reason we can't do our market analysis right there. And then also making sure it's our buyer search tool. Um, you know, and after that, once we kind of got you know the basics of all the platform pieces, then the next goal is to move into really um, you know AI. Uh, God, I hate that buzzword uh, to kind of help us out. Right. But, you know, that we should have computers doing the first read on the document and routing it to the appropriate transaction and my transaction coordinator then taking care of making sure it's signed correctly, you know, based on a previous template versus, you know, just getting that document somewhere. Uh, and figuring out what transaction it goes to in, in all of those pieces, uh, you know, and it's nothing like revolutionary. Um, you know, but what I've seen at like every broker, even Compass, is they always build things internally with their own tools and they're super awesome for a specific use case. And then life evolves, um, you know, and so if you look at like T3 and some of the Swan Pole industry folks, they're always like, you know, build off of a common platform, right? Like don't make it yourself, customize off of a common platform. Um, so that's kind of been, you know, the adventure is, uh, you know, being a broker of record and teaching myself to be a database administrator, um, you know, and kind of managing all of those, those projects and pieces. But it's also, you know, this might sound hokey. I'm sorry if this sounds that's hokey. okay, you're not. I love um, it. And, uh, you know, like when uh, an annual email goes out, right, like congratulations, it's the fifth anniversary of your, you know, home purchase with us, um, you know, or something like that. And it's just like something that's in the system, you know, that I set once and forgot about. And then the client, like, they write back. And they're genuinely, like, touched to hear from me, you know. And it seems like just such a dumb thing at some level, right? Like, I've, I've set up a reminder email to, you know, tell you once a year you bought a house. Um, and it means something, right? And, and it, I 
real estate to me is such a human people business. Um, you know, I have this super hard exterior shell, but inside I'm a total softy pushover. Um, you know, so those moments are, are glorious, right? And those are the moments that cement that relationship for a lifetime. You know, those are the moments that cause people to refer you clients and, and kind of all of those pieces. And, you know, I guess if I've learned anything after 20 years of doing this is that like the basics, it's really just the basics, right? Stay in touch with people, take care of people, do the right thing, let them know you care, right? People don't care what you know until they know that you care. So you're, you're continuing to show them that you care. Wow. I love the fact that you can, so you're doing your CRM right through Salesforce on top of pushing buttons and automatic things are happening with the contracts and such. The, that comes next, but the contracts like now it's kind of manually routed through the system, but that's the, the next piece. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really awesome. You should think about selling that your whole system. You could probably, you could probably sell it, and make a lot of money. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm hanging out here on the sidelines of San Francisco, just keeping my nose out of trouble and doing business. And, uh, you know, this is, I didn't move to San Francisco thinking I would end up in real estate. Um, I moved here in technology and thought I'd always be in technology. And I love it, right? I've been in it for almost two decades now. And I hope to be doing it for the you know rest of my life. What's the competition like in San Francisco? I mean, it's I know it's competitive everywhere, but I mean, even right now, it's such a weird time with everything happening. And <clears throat> I mean, San Francisco is like a ghost town. Tens of people are moving out of San Francisco because they can, because businesses are slowing down. What's that been like for you? So San Francisco is an insanely competitive market amongst agents. Uh, and part of the real estate story of the Bay Area for the last few years has been a lack of inventory. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So there's been a lack of inventory, but not a lack of agents. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, our association is running at roughly 5,000 agents, uh, which is, you know, at close to our highest numbers. Right. And, and yet, you know, there's not all of these extra houses showing up on the market. So competition just between agents, you know, for that business is fierce, uh, you know, and we're all frenemies. So that makes for a good time. Um, and then when you're working with buyers and sellers, you know, like the media always likes to talk in big, broad swaths of overgeneralization. Uh, and they've managed to do that once again with San Francisco real estate. And if, you have a single family or you're looking for a single family, it is competitive. A uh, single family market is still incredibly competitive in San Francisco. Um, multiple offers, offers going over asking, uh, waiving contingencies, short time frames, all cash or anything equivalent to it. Um, very, very, very aggressive. And we did have this adjustment in the condo market last year, right? Like once uh, the first shelter in place happened, like no one wanted a condo in a big building, right? You couldn't use the amenities. You were still paying through the roof. You weren't even sure if you want to get in the elevator with these people. Uh, so that market just froze for a while. And it started to unthaw kind of end of last year. And it's actually definitely picked up since the beginning of this year. And the easy story to write is that, oh, everyone's leaving San Francisco. And yeah, Definitely some people are, but my experience of the last year is people just got off the fence, right? If they'd been thinking about, you know, I'm renting and I really want to live here, they stopped thinking about it and they tried to make it happen, you know? And if they'd been thinking about like, eh, nah, I'm over San Francisco, they left, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and it's kind of been this, uh, interesting force of destruction that hasn't quite you know played itself through because we still have eviction moratoriums and you know people are still kind of the thaw I guess is starting to happen and you know the question is what's standing in kind of three four months especially kind of from the the local small business uh commercial office space um, you know, while the residential side is still, um, you know, comparatively hot, we have like 16 plus million square feet of commercial office space that's now available. I um, know. Like oh, that's a amazing. massive glut. Like normally we have like maybe a million square feet on the market um, and we're 16x right that night right now. 
and we still haven't even lifted commercial eviction protections. I know. Um, yeah. You know, and you know, I, I do mainly. Fact? What's that like? What do you think that's going to happen as far as, com- as far as commercial in the, in the city? I, I can't imagine that's got to be. It's going to go down significantly. Yeah, well, I mean, I do mainly residential, but I actually have also started doing some commercial. Um, and you know, my experience of commercial these days is everyone's asking their pre-pandemic rent. That's like the public number. But you talk to them and they're like, just bring me an offer. Just, yeah, just yeah. really, just bring That's me an offer. Something. Nobody knows. Like nobody is quite sure how to reprice this. Um, you know, so basically what I'm seeing is everyone's like, these were our old numbers. Uh, you know, bring us something. And, you know, they're very willing to negotiate on the front end, especially like the first couple of years, you know, and generally they're like, we will give you one heck of a deal just to get some kind of revenue with the hope of getting back towards something close towards pre-pandemic numbers, you know, year five, yeah. um, you know, so we'll see. I mean, it's like, uh, for example, it's a really they're like yoga. There was a huge yoga studio in, in town that went out of uh, business. Yoga tree they had like seven, six, seven studios. Um, you know, people are all interested in those spaces now. Um, and, you know, like six new yoga companies will probably come along. Uh, but, you know, yoga tree is gone. So it's been kind of like this creative destruction, right? Like yoga tree got burnt down by the pandemic and in its place, all of these little new, you know, yeah yoga will start um and perhaps merge acquire each other and then you know 15 years from now they're back to one big yoga tree too right um you know and so it'll just be this really interesting time you know i mean a lot of businesses unfortunately that were right on the edge might not make it through and you know that makes space for whoever's got the the next big idea uh whatever they want to try you know, I mean, I think that if, you know, tech's interest in San Francisco was to, to be turned down a little bit on the dial, um, that would be OK. Right. Like, you know, we've always been the town that loves the quirky underdog. Uh, so, you know, if we can afford to, you know, make spaces that quirky underdogs can rent and live in, let's do that. Are you wanting a kickstart on your business? and you wanna learn how to be the go-to professional in your industry, well, guess what? I've got a challenge for you. It's five days of coaching. It's brand new. Just go to kristamayshore.com slash client conversion. That's kristamayshore.com slash client conversion. And you'll get a training with me for five straight days. That's going to help kickstart you as the go-to professional in your industry. So sign up and I'll see you there. Yes. So tell me a little bit now, I mean, obviously the whole world wants sellers because there's a lack of inventory. I mean, I, I coach agents from across the country and everywhere across the country, there it, it is just the same thing. Bidding wars, multiple offers, no contingencies. Like you're talking 20, 25 offers, right? 100,000 over asking. Um, and I'm sure even where you are, it's probably even more because you're in the city. So what are you doing right now to attract sellers? Uh, you know, Part of it is actually, you know, on my website, believe it or not, I get really good leads. Um, And I know not every website says that. And I've dealt with all of the electronic leads over the years. And I know how sad they can be in quality. Um, You know, but my other experience with sellers uh, is while buyers are much more likely to come through and, you know, be like ready to like, hey, I found my house. Let's do this. You'll be fine. Uh, You know, sellers are very much uh, still relationship uh, oriented. They tend to get referrals. Uh, They tend to ask around for other people that have worked with, you know, they might check out your website, they might want to get a postcard, Um, you know, so really, what am I doing? I am staying in touch with my base. Uh, I'm checking in with them. I'm talking to them. I'm, you know, asking them what they need. Uh, You know, we're right around tax season. So there's always the tax documents for people. There's, there's a ton of reasons, right? There's always an excuse to, to pick up the phone and call somebody. And, you know, people are always curious, right? They're like, what is up? Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's always an easy conversation and, you know, it's not like I'm pumping them hard. Like, you know, like who, who can you introduce me to today, today that would like to set, buy or sell their house in the next three months, you know, but just like being top of mind yeah, and letting them know I'm still out there, you know, I'm still winning. Uh, I'm still doing great things for my clients and, you know, um, just staying visible. Gotcha. So, so your main, and, Go ahead. It's, and, and if I may. I think as an industry, 
we're always addicted to like the quick fix, right? Like let's go out and buy some leads to get some sellers or, you know, let's go just let's toss some money in to accelerate whatever it is we want to do versus like, like seeing the abundance in what we have, you know? Um, and I, you know, like I have a beautiful book of business and it can be easy to take that for granted and be like, Oh, book of business. I got it. Let's go get some more. Right. Or you can be like, Hey, book of business, beautiful asset. Let's make it even more beautiful. Right. Um, you know, and I, I think that agents, uh, well, I mean, maybe I'm just the only one with ADHD that's, you know, easily distracted like a squirrel. Um, but we often are, and that's to our detriment, I think. So, you know, staying in touch with past clients, uh, I think is really important. Staying in touch with my sphere, uh, just trying to stay visible in what I do. Also, uh, my, I have a podcast, um, and it's in its fifth season. And that's kind of been a really, uh, another differentiating factor. And can I tell you how the podcast came to be? Yeah. Tell me how the podcast came to be and tell me. Like, I'm so glad you asked. What you're talking about on the <laughs> podcast and all that, because I think, you know, people are probably, oh, what would I talk about on a podcast? You know? So the podcast actually starts as a blog in 2006. Uh, we were one of the first real estate bloggers in San Francisco and we blogged over the years and that was great, except for when I would find my content on someone else's site, right? That you could just go to my site, you can cut and paste and suddenly you got some great content for your newsletter. And yes, you know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery and it's also totally uncool to steal stuff. Oh, so... Yeah. I was like, I'm tired of this. I'll tell you a story this. in a minute about that. I'll tell you a story. You're All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I'm like, I'm tired of this. You know, so I still want to put myself out there. I still very much believe in content marketing. What could I do that expresses me and what I know and makes it at least a little harder to take it and pretend it's yours? And I was like a podcast, right? Because even if they take all the information I say, they're still not me delivering yes. it in my way. You know, at most you can like hire someone to make a transcript and do your best to try and make it your own words. And by the time you've done all of that, you really just should have taken the time to do your own thing because it would have been better to start with and taken less time. Yeah. Um, you know, so the podcast is oriented at, you know, San Francisco real estate buyers, sellers, and people who find it interesting. And it aims to be this informational and also educational and also entertaining kind of story of, of San Francisco real estate um, without giving away confidential details or name yeah. dropping or like the horrible million dollar listing behavior. It's, it's none of that. Um, and we've had great guests, you know, I've had like inspectors come on and talk about, you know, what they're looking for or what you should, you know, think of as a buyer. Um, I've had industry, you know, folks uh, like the California association of realtors, chief economist has been on to talk about, you know, real estate and uh, forecasts and all of those pieces. And I just wrapped up a, a three-part series on racism in California real estate, which sounds like a horribly depressing topic. And it is, uh, but it was just mind boggling, mind blowing. So eye opening uh, the extent to which organized real estate had helped uh, participate in and create barriers to home ownership for people of color. And, you know, it was, it was one of those things like until I was even aware of it, like I didn't even know there was something that I needed to be aware of. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the chance to have that conversation, it was a three part series. Um, you know, I had, uh, uh, I walked through the history of, uh, prop 14 in 1964, which was this major fair housing discrimination law that was actually unfortunately passed. Uh, the first, uh, black president for the San Francisco association of realtors, Don Saunders joined me and we had this great conversation walking through that. And the second part was a panel of Bay area realtors talking about their experience. And we were joined by one community activist. Uh, so it was this beautiful combination of activists, uh, you know, speaking to, to personal experience uh, and their personal truth. 
and agents, you know, who are just as, as concerned, you know, hoping to move the ball forward. And then in part three, which will be released soon, we actually do a QA and a uh, about modern real estate racism. Uh, and what is it uh, you know, that we as practitioners need to be aware of in terms of our language, our actions, uh, things that we might not even be thinking about, or that if we do think about, we're like, oh gosh, that's just overly sensitive. Um, and sure, you can say it's overly sensitive, or you can try and put yourself in the other person's shoes and live the golden rule. Ooh, I'd love to interview those that last one for sure on my podcast. I think that'd be interesting just for everyone to hear, you know? If, so hopefully you can maybe pass on that information. So how many downloads are you getting a month? I want to kind of put this into perspective for our listeners because I preach content marketing and utilizing video and properly distributing it like crazy. And I think a podcast for some people would be a great way to get the, your name out there, to add value, to serve, not just sell, and to really, really be that community market leader, that go-to pr- person of authority in the community if they're not comfortable doing video. So how many downloads of, of a month are you getting and how much business do you think you attribute? I mean, are people listening? Yes. So uh, I'm getting a couple thousand downloads a month, um, you know, and uh, like each each episode kind of has, you know, it's built in social media base in terms of who the guests were and those pieces, um, you know, and then there's the, the advertising outreach. Uh, and, you know, at this point, I guess like I would think of the podcast as like the billboard, right? It's, it's not going to be, it's, It's definitely raised people's awareness of me. Uh, It's put me on their map. I have had people come to me and say, hey, I want to talk to you because of your podcast. That that has actually happened. But I think it's also uh, more kind of a validating layer, right? It's social proof, Um, you know, so that if you have heard of my... Shows you're the authority. Yeah, so if you've seen my website, then suddenly there's a podcast on all of the, you know, Apple and Google and all of these things. So I get some, you know, like my brands with their brand. So that's a benefit to me, um, you know, and all of these other kind of uh, just little bits of, you know, social truth that say I am who I am. Uh, I'm not a fraud. I've been doing this for a while and I know what I speak of. And I guess the way uh, I kind of equate it is uh, I don't know how long you've been doing real estate, but back in the old days, you know, you, you toss them in the car and you drive them around. Uh, until they like just break and they're like, I'll take that one. Just let me out of your car. <laughs> um, and I'm along the way, you, I'm, I'm laughing right now. It's been, I, I, when I first started, I had to like use the Thomas guide and write out, you know, 12 houses from the Thomas guide and it would take like freaking forever. And then God forbid you wrote something down wrong and you're like, Oh my God, I'm trying to find this. <laughs> it was a nightmare. Now then, and then map quest came out. I was like, thank God for map quest, you know? And now there's like in Carnav, and I'm just like, who are these amateurs? If you need a map, come on, can you even be a realtor? Right. <laughs> so funny. Well, great. So, so, you know, but like when you were in the car back in the day, right? Like you had a chance to chat. Yeah. Right. And even if it just felt like you were driving around looking at houses, you were sniffing them. And they were sniffing you. Yeah, you became right? friends and you got to, with them. Most, you know, became friends with these people that you get close to them, you know? Yeah. And so, and we we, we miss that now, right? And in the compression and, and all that's moved to the internet, a lot of that has gone away. And so I try to think of like the podcast as that drive time, right? Like we're sitting in the car. I'm talking about houses. I want them to get to know me. I want to get to know them you know, but we're going to do that on their schedule now, right? Like drive around with me, pretend in a car, anytime you want to listen to a podcast. <laughs> How many episodes do you have that roll out a week? That roll out a week. Uh, we aim for two a month. Two a month. Okay. So, two, two a month. Two um, you know, they, they varied all over come from, you know, just me doing kind of short info bits that are like five to 10 minute podcasts, you know, to me hosting a round table of five other people that's, you know, running an hour, an hour plus. Mm -hmm. Um, And these days I'm really kind of focused on, you know, using it to raise visibility of of issues in the real estate industry that are important to me, Um, you know, and I still love to tell stories about San Francisco real estate. Like I will never not be able to tell a story about San Francisco real estate. And, you know, there's a lot that I think we can do as an industry and a city 
to do better in terms of affordable housing, uh, to be more accessible, to be more friendly, uh, to be seen as less racist. <laughs> um, you know, there's plenty of work to do. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so um, we're r- wrapping up here. And I always ask people, so two things. Number one, where can they find you? And if somebody wants to see you, Matt, like what? how would they find you and look you up? And I'm sure they want to see your website and all the great stuff you're doing. Jacksonfuller.com. 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 Okay. Just, is that the name of just your Just like it partner? sounds. Uh, my business partner is Britton Jackson, and I am Matt Fuller. And that led us to Jackson Fuller. And it's funny because uh, I always know when the spam call is coming because they're like, hello, I'm calling for Mr. Jackson Fuller. (laughs) I know you love, you're like, oh, he doesn't exist. Click. You're like, goodbye. That was a great name. Yes. Mr. Jackson Fuller. If he didn't call it Fuller Jackson, they probably would be like, oh, you know, they probably would have known. So, okay. So what is the one piece of advice you'd like to give people, whether it's business or personal, just one piece of advice that you'd like to end with for our listeners? Oh, man. You know, there's the advice I know I want to give, but I'm trying to think of something that's more specific than, you know, just this kind of like, (laughs) Um, I guess for me, the moments that I've failed that have helped me learn who I really am have been the moments that have been the most useful. And for example, I came to content marketing and blogging by getting nothing out of postcard farming. Uh, And when I started in the business, I sucked at open houses, right? They're still not necessarily my favorite thing. And, you know, all of the advice in this industry is like, do this, do this, do this, do this, right? Um, And sure, that's true. Uh, And if you're forcing yourself into doing something, and you're not really loving it, and it's not really feeling right, ultimately it doesn't really serve you and it doesn't last. Um, you know, so the advice is be true to yourself, you know, find who you are and be that person without apology, because that is absolutely what attracts clients to you. Uh, I am a huge believer in, in the law of attraction. Um, and my experience of finding my true self, uh, in this industry is number one, it's, it's a journey. It's not done yet. Uh, and number two, it's hard. It requires some failure, some mistakes, some vulnerability, and don't be afraid of that. I'm not saying go up and, you know, go out and screw up. Um, but, you know, try really hard, try something different. Uh, you know, try that thing in the back of your head that you're like, I think this could be cool, even if everyone else doesn't quite get it. Uh, be true to yourself. Uh, at the end of the day, that is all you have is your reputation um, and cherish it. I love it. Okay. I appreciate it. This is, this has been great. And I, I'm totally a person of a lot of attraction, read all the books, uh, watched the movie, the secret, probably like 75 times, have it almost memorized, right? Absolutely believe in the law of attraction. And, um, you know, you said a couple of things, just be, be yourself, right? Fail forward. It's okay. Um, and just don't be afraid to kind of put yourself out there. So I appreciate you so much, Matt. So you want to go to jacksonfuller.com, jacksonfuller.com. You can see Matt and what he's doing, what he's up to. And I'm sure if you have anyone that's thinking about moving to San Francisco or who you know that wants to sell in San Francisco, I can tell that Matt is your guy because you can tell he seriously does care about his clients. So if you're looking for someone to take great care of him, he is the man. Thank you so much for being on here, Matt. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. This has been great fun. Uh, oh. And uh, I love, love what you're up to. And thank you for doing it. Oh, I, I, you're, you're so welcome. And hey, everyone, remember, thanks so much for giving me a little piece of your time. I appreciate it so much. But remember, listening and learning is great, but that's not where the key to success is. The key to success is actually, the key to sex. The key to success is actually implementation. It's implementation. It might be sex too, but for sure implementation. Don't forget, we got our two-day live event coming up. Go to kristamayshore.com slash two days live. That's kristamayshore.com slash the number two days live. And I'll see you next time. Thanks again. Hey there, I have a brand new podcast called Fired Up with Krista Mayshore, where I bring my high energy right to your ears. This podcast is available on all your favorite podcast platforms. So do me a favor, go subscribe and leave a review. All this information is free and I cannot wait to teach you everything I know. Thanks so much for watching my video. 
You can learn more about how to be a successful real estate professional by watching other videos that I have. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. And as always, make it a great home selling and buying day.